Hello, and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Craig Barton. Now, depending on when you're watching this, this is actually the final resource of the week of the 2017-2018 academic year. Fingers crossed, I'll be back for another series. You never know, you never, never count your chickens. But I was thinking, what is a great resource to go out on a high with? So, just as I always do whenever I'm in the need for a good resource, I turn to my all-time favourite resource uploader. I mean, Andy, it's, it's a crime that he's not been knighted or at least given an OBE or the statue made of him or something because the resources he produces are flipping ridiculous how good they are. Think about the Code Breaker resources. Think about Clumsy Clive and Erica's errors. And he's, he's done them all. And now he's got another series. What was the question? I don't know how the man does it, and I flipping love these ones. Now, there's a few of these bombing around, but I've picked out Venn, Di Venn Diagram Special. And I'll tell you why, because it's flipping hard. And God, it got me thinking about this. So I want, to picture, I want you to picture the scene. Imagine you have got a year 11 class, um, or even, to be honest with you, a year 12 class who you're teaching statistics to. And you've taught them the basics of Venn diagrams. So they know the set notation. They know what all those funny squiggles means. Perhaps they're pretty uh, confident when it comes to filling in Venn diagrams, perhaps working out simple probabilities from them and so on. They're feeling pretty confident. So now you need to give them a challenge. Well, this is where, for me anyway, this resource comes into play. So it is a PowerPoint. Um, it is called What Was the Question? And I'll show you the first one here. Now, just like all Andy's resources, he, he kindly provides the answers and it's a flipping good job. So I was struggling on some of these. So the idea here is that each of those four questions, the answer is four and eight. And what you've got to do, or your students have got to do, is you've got to complete what the question is. So let's have a look at this first one. So the entire set is made up of integers from one to nine inclusive. A set A is given by a certain definition. And the question is, less, less, list all the members of set A. Now, you know the answer's got to be four and eight. So what could the question be? Well, if we just have a little flick here, multiples of four could work. Now, already you can start to see, firstly, it's challenging because you've got to think about it. But secondly, you have the natural follow-up question. Is that a unique answer? Is that the only answer we can get? And then you get to some flipping tricky ones. I mean, I was struggling enough with that one, but look at this one here. So integers from one to nine inclusive, again. Set A is all the prime numbers. Set B is something. And we've got to get all the members that aren't in A or B. So they're <laughs> neither a prime number nor whatever this definition of set B is. And the answer's got to be four and eight. I was scratching my flipping head for ages with this one, but that factors of 18 is something that works. And Andy's put here, e.g., which suggests possibly there are other ones. Now you can see straight away that this is gonna be provoking discussion left, right, and center. It's gonna be getting the kids scratching their head and thinking. And I'll tell you what, we're just getting warmed up here because that's just the first set. Then we get into here. So the answer is seven, and you can see here that we get a triple Venn diagram there. The Venn diagram shows uh, the number of people in each section. Find, and we don't know what the question is, but we know the answer's got to be seven. Well, there's a seven lurking there. Can we find a way to describe it? But actually, we can perhaps make up seven as well by using four and three, or four, one, and two. So there might actually be different ways. So we can do it using M and N, but there might actually be other ways we can describe seven. And there's loads of things here. I like this as well. Venn diagram shows um, how 20 people voted between P and Q. Find the number of people who voted for P. We've got five on the outside. We know the answer's seven. So then we've got to come up with something where A and B has got to be equal to seven. That has to be eight because we're tied because that's 20 and so on. So how many different combinations could that be? And it's just, God, it just provokes so much thought. And we're only on the easy ones yet. We've not even got warmed up because now we start to venture into these kind of things. We've got a badger involved here. So we've got letters of the alphabet describing things. We've got A or B is the answer this time. So I love this because now it's not just a number answer. We've got notation for an answer. So what could the question be? And it just goes on and on and on. This time we've got probabilities coming into play. So now we're really getting the kids thinking. Four questions where each time the answer's got to be nine out of 20. I love this one. Using the Venn diagram below, find the probability of not B. And again, we're tied into having a five and a three there. What numbers are going to go there? So the probability of not B has got to be equal to nine over 20. Then we get triple Venn diagrams and so on. And I just think these are great. And then we get the classic. 
a blank template can students come up with their own can they come up with an answer and can they come up with four different scenarios which have questions which give that answer and if they can do that god almighty they probably understand venn diagrams and set notation i just think this is wonderful and andy started creating these on a whole host of subjects what a fantastic phenomenal resource and what a way to end this series of resource of the week which for me i know i say this every year i've been doing this seven eight years probably recording these videos getting better and better every year so just from me first off for this particular video thank you to andy for, for producing this and for all he does but thank you to everybody who has ever produced a resource and shared it on tes it's a massive thing to do that right it's something you've put time in you've tweaked it you've tried it with your kids and you thought right actually I'm not just gonna keep this to myself. I'm gonna share this with the whole wide world. I know for me personally, it means the world because it's just helped me become a better teacher just using the wealth of expertise that's out there, some of these amazing resources. And it's helped my students learn mathematics. And I know that's the case for thousands of others. So first off, thank you to anyone who's ever shared a resource on here. Secondly, if you haven't shared a resource, give it a go. Give it a go, give a little back. And thirdly, if you have used a resource, come back and leave a review and pass on your thanks. I know from a personal experience, but also speaking to other teachers, what a huge difference that makes, what a huge confidence boost and what a nice warm feeling it leaves inside when you know somebody's used your resource and enjoyed it. As I say, fingers crossed, I'll be back with a brand new series of Resource of the Week for the 2018-2019 year. So if you're watching this just before summer, you take care of yourself, enjoy the end of term, have a lovely, restful, well-earned summer, and I'll see you in September. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.